Good morning, fellow programmers. Thanks for joining me. I am T-Pain, and welcome to Let's Learn Python. Feel free to use the skip ahead feature on the right hand side, although for this lesson in particular, I would not recommend skipping through. Today we'll be using Python 2.7.4, and you can download it from python.org slash get it. Today we'll be focusing on nesting functions and decorators. This will build heavily on past lessons, so feel free to go back and watch them again if anything is unclear. Before we start, I'd like to give credits to uh, SimoneFranklin.com, uh, as this tutorial would not have been possible without it. There's a link to this site in the description. Alright, so nesting functions, what are they? They are functions that are declared within other functions. What? Yes, if you feel like your brain is melting out of your ears, this is completely normal. Defining functions within functions is a weird concept, and I'm going to try to walk you through as carefully as I can through the process of how it actually works. Alright, so I'll start this by saying functions are really just objects and let's go ahead and crack open idle and let's go ahead and save this file to the desktop and call this nesting underscore functions underscore decorators dot py all right so you don't need to follow along with this part it's just to prove that functions are indeed objects in python so i'm going to type x equals five def print ham open close parentheses colon pass and then create a class called test colon enter pass and then print Dir. And let's go ahead and press F5 to run it. All right, and so what Python spit out is a list of all objects that are currently active and available. So we have test, the class that we created here. We have printham, the function that we created, and the variable x, which we created up top. Python is reading these all as objects. All right, so why do I bring this up? Well, functions can return objects or instances of classes, variables, strings, integers, etc. But they can also be used to return functions. That's right, a function can return another function. So let's create a simple example. I'm going to go ahead and delete this code, and I want you to follow along with me. We're going to type def outside, open close parentheses, colon, enter, and then we're going to declare a second function within this one. So we're going to type def print ham, our favorite function in the world, open close parentheses, colon, enter, and then just print, of course, ham. Enter, unindent, so we're outside of the second function and within only within the first function. And then we're just going to type return print ham. And then we're not going to include any parentheses. We're not actually calling function. We're returning it. Okay. We're going to go ahead and exit the function and then type my func is equal to outside open and close parentheses, enter, and then type my func open and close parentheses and go ahead and save and then run it. Perfect. So what magic just happened? So temporarily ignore this definition of outside. What are we doing within it? Well, here we're actually defining a function called print ham and it's creating an object within the function. And then we're returning that object. So why bother with this? Why not just create the function outside? Well, let's add to our example just a little bit. Within the outside function, I'm going to go ahead and add a local variable called x and then set equal to 5. And then right here where it says ham, Instead, I'm going to replace that with X. So for the time being, it's actually going to just print X, whatever that is. So before pressing enter and actually running this function, what do you think is going to happen? The X is created in local space for the outside function. So that means after it executes, X is no longer in existence. So if I were to type print X, it would crash the program. But we are setting the function print ham equal to this one. So will it be able to access X? after it's exited that? Well, let's go ahead and run it and find out. Press F5 to run and it spits out five perfectly. So what's happening is at the time of definition, when we declare print ham, it's taking a snapshot of all variables that print ham has access to. And since x equals five is technically global to print ham, it stores it within that snapshot. It's almost as if this is a class instead of a definition and it has local variables and then it has functions that have access to those variables at the time of its creation. That is really freaking cool, is it not? <laughs> so you may be asking yourself, why not just use a class? Well, for one, this uses less lines of code than a class. Also, with classes, you have to know what function that you want to call. With this method, all we need to do is just add open close parentheses to the end of the function, and it calls whatever is being passed out of the outside function. Also, you can use conditionals within the definition of the outside function. So it'd be like, if some condition, like x is like greater than 5, then use this function. Otherwise, return another function. So this stuff is really cool. What else can you do with it? Well, we can pass in arguments and variables and have local copies made. For example, if we wanted to, we could take this 
x equals 5, cut it, and then paste it into the arguments of the outside function, and then it would be stored. So we'll go ahead and delete that, and it'll still work just fine. Save F5, still works just fine. And we can override that with a 7 or whatever we want. Go ahead and save that, run it again, and it returns 7. So the passed in variables are being stored in that snapshot when print ham is defined. Functions are objects. So since we've tried already returning functions, so how about we try passing them in as an argument into a function. So passing a function into another function. Let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go ahead and select all this stuff and delete it. And then I'm going to create a simple function that just adds one to the result of another function. So I'm going to type def add one open parentheses my func close parentheses colon enter def add one inside open close parentheses colon enter return my func open close parentheses plus one enter and then we're going to type return add one inside enter and then we're going to declare a simple function that just returns three so type def old func open close parentheses colon enter return three after that type new func is equal to add one open parentheses old func close parentheses enter print old func open close parentheses comma new func open close parentheses save it let's go ahead and run it beautiful all right so let's go step by step what this is actually doing my func is passed in the arguments and then we declare another function within it this is the one that's going to be the new function and so this is saying hey i've got a snapshot of what this old function does and now what i'm going to do is i'm going to return the old value that is returned from that function and then add one more to the end of it and then at the end it's just saying store this new function in whatever so then we have this old function and it just returns three so then finally at the end we're saying hey add one to this old function to create this new function so now this old function returns three and the new function returns four perfect and this is what a decorator is. Now let's think about what are decorations in real life. We've got a bow on top of a box, or we can have frosting on a cake. These are all little things that add something extra on something else. And this is exactly what decorators are. We had this old function that returned three, and then we added one to create this new function that returns four. We are decorating the old function to create the new one. So you may be seeing this and be like, like all right, this is pretty cool. We're creating a new function from that old function, but what would be even more powerful is if we actually overrode the previous function with the new one. So let's do just that by copying old and replacing the new function and deleting the, <laughs> the last bit from the print function. Save it, F5, beautiful. So now the old function that returns three is now overridden to return four whenever we call it. How cool is that? You'd be like, oh man, that is so useful. But is there an easier way? Of course there is. So Python provides an even easier way to replace this uh, awkward line where it says like old funk and is equal to old funk. It's just kind of unclear what's going on. And what we can do is use a simple decorator. So right above def old funk, I'm going to type at and then add one. That's it. Save it and then run it. And it does the exact same thing. This at symbol is basically saying, hey, pass this function and then add a little bit something to it and then override the previous version. And so that's what results in the four up above because we're just adding one right to the old definition of the function. So it took a while to get here, but now you know what decorators are. Finally, let's clean up this code just a little bit. Being as how we know where this decorator will be applied, let's make it so we can handle most all functions by adding star args and star star keyword args. Okay, so on the uh, inner function right here at the add one inside, we're gonna type star args comma star star keyword args or kwargs. Copy that and then paste it within the actual call of it right below. Okay, save that, run it, perfect. So now in the old function, if we wanted to type some variable, we could always type like x equals uh, some number, right? And then have it return x. And then if we save and run it, it'll add one to whatever that default value is. Or if we wanted to, we could override it with whatever value we wanted. Save, run it, and it still works just fine. Perfect. All right, thank you so much for watching. Great job keeping up. Definitely take a few minutes to investigate these final challenges as it'll really help cement in your mind concepts that we practice today. Please leave me a comment below if this helped you at all and do me a huge favor and subscribe to my channel it would really mean a lot to me thank you so much for your support and keep the dream alive